That's a non-starter. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you can't go. You can't really get yeah, anywhere that's a, that's with a that. Non-starter. Right. Yeah. George Washington was our first president. Prove it scientifically. All right, so here, Vody is asked, what does he do when somebody asks for 100% proof that God exists or of what you believe? To be honest, I think he brings up quite a few good points. And I also want to share with you a couple of statistics that I think are going to strengthen the point that he makes here. How would you respond to someone who insists that we need, quote unquote, proof for biblical truths? It, it that defends, depends on how they're defining truth. I mean, proof, right? First Peter three, as Christians, we're told to always be ready to give a reason to anyone who asks us the reason for the hope that is in us. So as Christians, we, we ought always to be ready um, to explain what we believe and why we believe it, right? So to to that extent, I, I agree, but that's usually not what people are talking about. Usually what they're talking about is scientific proof for historic events. And what I mean by that is this, like the scientific method, in order to apply the scientific method, something has to be observable and measurable and repeatable, right? We got some science majors in here, right? Right? You got a hypothesis, you got to be able to test the hypothesis. Right? It's got to be observable, it's got to be measurable, it's got to be repeatable. You don't use the scientific method for historical events. They're not observable. Right? I, I can't observe George Washington's presidency. So I don't believe George Washington's president presidency by the scientific method. I, I use an evidentiary method, right? I, I use, I use a, the, the kind of method that you use in a courtroom. Okay? It, it, it's... It's a it's a different approach. It's a it's a different standard. So oftentimes, what people are asking for is something that doesn't exist for any kind of historical event, right? right? So we we have to be able to give a reason, right? But the idea that that would be held up to the kind of scrutiny that nothing else in history uh, would be held to, um, or, or that it is. Um, you know, philosophically inconsistent with the pursuit of truth concerning those types of events. Uh, well, I mean that that's a non-starter. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you can't go. You can't really get yeah, anywhere a, with that. That's a non-starter, right? Yeah. George Washington was our first president. Prove it scientifically. <laughs> and Vody here is absolutely right. I mean. People, the scrutiny that people look at the Bible or the claims of, of Christianity are completely not only unfair, but a lot of the times is hailed to an absurd standard compared to anything else or even uh, not scriptures, but text that would have came out during that time as well. Like to give you an example here, let me show you the number of manuscripts for other ancient works that would have came out around the same period of time, right, that we get the Bible from, right? So as you can see here, I just want you to notice this, okay? The New Testament in Greek has over 5,856 different copies, okay? That's just in Greek. Then in all other languages, we're looking at over 23,000 different copies. And I want you to remember that number because this is going to be important for when we talk about the accuracy of all of these works. Now, if you look at all of the other ones like Homer's Odyssey, the Iliad, all of these other historical, I want to say works that happen within this time have substantially lower amount of copies. And yet people don't look at these right with as much scrutiny as they look at the Bible where we have the most amount of copies and possibility for errancy, actually. Uh, regarding the accuracy of scriptures or the manuscripts that we found over the years when it comes to the Bible, I want you to understand that this would include, uh, you know, things like things like the spelling, the order of the words, any grammatical issues, right? So if you're taking all of this into account and you're looking at all of the copies that we have for the Bible, get this, right? There is about a 95 to 99% accuracy 
in all of these manuscripts like that is insane so you know that stupid analogy that a lot of people like to use when it comes to the game of telephone right that's the one where somebody tells you something you tell the other person and then by the time you get to the end it's a completely different message look first of all the whole fun of that game is to change what the other person says so it's really like it's a very silly example but secondly is is that you would think right if people were making stuff stuff up, if God wasn't keeping his word holy and accurate, that there would be a lot more issues and errors found in these manuscripts. And I want to repeat this number, 95 to 99% accuracy amongst what it says. And the things that are that are that are different have nothing to do with the overall concept, the overall idea, and the truths that are being shared about God, the gospel, and Jesus. These all have to do with simple things when it comes to spelling or, or the order of some words. So I hope that when you ask this question, this gives you a lot more weapons, if you will, to come to this argument and that you're able to better defend your faith. All right, guys, this is all that I had for you today. And as always, just want to remind you that we must persevere.